Hey everyone, it's Kathy Zilski. Welcome back to my channel and the craft slash dining room. I don't know about you, but the number one card that I need more than any other is birthday. Today I'm sharing a brand new die that I created for Simon Says Stamp that's just about the birthday. It's a very simple sans serif typeface I think you will enjoy. Sans serif anyone? Anyone? What? I'm just gonna ink blend, die cut, and pop it on a cool embossed background. So stick around to see my clean and simple birthday card featuring a brand new die coming up next. Here's a look at the products I'll be creating with today. And I've got a happy B-Day word die and shadow layer. And this is pretty large too, just so you know, you've got this Nice big word, there's my human hand, and a shadow layer if needed, okay? So that's Happy Bee Day. A party candle, there's two styles here. Not sure which one I'm gonna do. And then I've got some distress inks. I'm doing a partial rainbow, coming here, ending with salvage patina. Of course, salvage patina hasn't been released in the small cubes yet, so that's why, you know, got the big one. And I'm gonna be using, of course, a few blender brushes, there they are in my lovely holder. And we're gonna keep this pretty simple. I don't think to do this very often. And so I'm going to ink blend onto a piece of Nina Solar White Classic Crest, the 110 pound, yeah. And we're gonna make a simple birthday card. So let's get started. I'm gonna start with my little pink brush. And actually I'm using my full size brushes. I could use small, well, do I wanna use small? Hmm, I am going to have to cut this, but but basically what I wanna do before I get too carried away is just make sure, I'll do a little check mark for each letter because I wanna make sure I have room for all the colors. And this is just a visual reference for me. You know, maybe I do wanna do the small brushes. Let's take a small brush. They'll work just as well, but this will give me a little bit more of the ability to get into that small area that I'm that I'm looking for. So, oh, and I guess I could go like that and like that. Okay, taking this away, and let's just start here and work our way up. Let's get you out of there. I don't even think I needed this here, but let's uh, let's ink blend. You know, maybe I do want the bigger brush. It's hard to say. I'm switching it up. I'm just creating a swath of color, and it's going to be a rainbow. Oh, there. I think I like that better. Okay, like that. Coming on down like this. Hmm. All right. We'll just work our way through the rainbow so that my happy birthday has a wonderful blend as it's happening, right? Let's get the uh, spiced marmalade out here. Okay, I'm just rubbing this off a little on paper towel. I'm not sure what I was using on it last time. But we're loading this up and let's come in here with the orange. Coming up. And I might go back and forth over these a little too because I feel like the blend could be a little better. And we'll see. We'll just go. We're going for it. Mustard seed. And we'll bring in this color right in the center. Mustard seed, such a good color. Yep. The nice thing about doing these types of backgrounds for anything is it doesn't require a lot of skill. You, you know, you don't have to be fancy. You don't have to be fancy. If you want to be fancy, you can be fancy. But the beautiful thing is you don't have to be fancy. All right. Also, I like having my stencil mat here because it really does sort of hold the, the pad in place too because of that silicone sort of non-slip surface. So this is Twisted Citron, the greatest green in all of Distress Inkdom. Now I'm not going all the way through to purple and I want you all to know it's not anything against purple. I love purple. I do a lot of things with purple. Purple is my friend. But today, it is not my friend. And it's not my, it's not like it's my enemy. <laughs> Sounds a little dramatic. But here we go. All right, now we bring in our big pad, the salvage patina, because we don't have the little one. But I think, I could be wrong, but I think the next color 
maybe the next color that Tim releases, we will have uh, four for the next mini collection because that's kind of how Tim does it. He does them in uh, in groups of four, and I think we're getting close. But you know, I like bigger pads too. Some, sometimes I wish I had all the distress pads in the larger size. I don't. But true story, back when I started scrapbooking, Tim and I have been friends for years and years and years, and he sent me, way back in the olden days, he did send me a few distress pads. But back then, it was just like vintage photo. And it was, uh, it was back when we used to take our photos and just ink up the edges to try to or not photos, but like ink up the edges of cardstock to age them and make them look fancy. Does anyone, am I dating myself? Cause I remember doing that. And that is, those were the large size ink pads that I had, which I think is kind of funny. Oh, see now it doesn't, there we go. I should be working on my full size map, but I'm just gonna overlap here. Anyway, I have some big size pads, but they're mostly the older brown colors, not these newer ones. Although meaning, you know what, do as I, I don't even know what I'm talking about. But I'm just going to come in here, do a little more blending, try to get those colors to mix a little. Get my yellow back in there. And this will be pretty. This will just be, you know, a happy birthday. Once this dries, it'll look a little smoother. I have to admit, I got it a little, got a little wonky there. Let's pump that pink up. Oh, I love worn lipstick. It's such a good color. So let's overlap. And now I'll bring the dye in just to see are we in a good place to incorporate all the text? See that? Okay, while we're here, let's grab my snips. And the way you cut them apart is with wire snips. Now, I got these a long time ago. I got these at Michael's, but they sell these at Simon Says Stamp. It's a brand called Beetalon. And, you know, any, any sort of wire clipper snipper will do because you want to release them, right, from the from the container of the shadow. Here's another thing that I like to do. Clip onto that little nib and twist. You could file that off too when you're done. I always just put it off to the side and hope that I remember to sweep it up. But see that? You just go right close to the little pointy nib, twist. And it's going to look a little better and you're probably not going to bleed as heavily. <laughs> Ask me how I know. So that's just a way to clean off the nibs or pointy jaggy things. And sometimes you have to do it on both and sometimes you only have to do it on one, but this will help you get that job done. I'm gonna just put a little piece of tape on that so it doesn't slip and now you can see how it's gonna pick up the pink through to the blue. I think I also would have run out of room for purple and sometimes that happens. Sometimes it happens, but then I use the purple tape. So hopefully that makes everybody who loves purple feel happy. It makes me happy. All right running it through. Maybe I'll go back and forth a few times just to get a nice good cut. Ooh. Might have to oil that up sometime soon, but let's see. Ooh, the cut looks good. I'm gonna take that up like this. <gasps> Look at that, perfect cut. Now you emerge with whoop, <laughs> happy bee day and they are connected, right? So you can keep them connected. You could even cut them apart too if you wanted to do a little a little different look. But there's that. Now I thought it would be fun and I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Let's get the candle out here. What if I took a candle and I cut out a couple of these to get as much of that as I could or maybe just one. I actually kinda like the uh, stripey one so I think what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna bend this. You can also bend to snip like that and pop the other one back in the pocket. And again, you know, I would probably clean those up later, but while this is here, just because I'm not 100% sure yet what I'm going to do, I might do the bottom of the candle like that. Or do I want it to be the fill? I'm gonna give myself some choices. This is what happens when we create on the fly. We're gonna give ourselves some choices. All right, let's run it through. It'll have a bit of a rainbow. And that could be fun too. All right. Well, let's see what happens there. Oh, look at that. And then of course, I would put a little yellow for the flame. So right now, here's what we have for our card project. We have Happy Bee Day. Oh, 
the size of that's perfect. All right, so I think what I'm going to do is, well, I could use foam squares for this. That would probably be pretty easy to pop it up that way. Hmm, let me think on this for a sec. I think while I'm here, here's what I want to do. I'm going to cut just that for the, for the top so we have a yellow flame out of the same ink medium, if you will. So let's run that through. We are really committing now, okay? No turning back. No, oh, perfect. See that? So now I have, get you out of there. I have a little flame that would be in the proper color for a, a flame. Okay, moving on. Before I put my die cut machine away, I've taken out the clear plates and put in a metal adapter plate. And I'm grabbing a 3D embossing folder. This is Crystal Distortion, which is one of my favorites. And I'm going to take a little misty water here. I've trimmed this down to be three, three and three quarters by five. Okay, that's the panel. And I'll just mist one side and mist the other side just to soften the fibers a bit so they, we don't get any cracking. And I'm just doing this to create a fun texture panel for my card. So I'll run it through. Ooh, you know what? I might need some cardstock in there. That feels like it could use a shim. Hmm. Well, we're going to have to see. Mm, I don't know. Sometimes you need a shim and that just doesn't feel super tight to me. So I'm just running this through again. I think it will be okay because I can totally see it coming through. Let's just open and see. Oh yeah, look at that. Isn't that just cool? So this panel is going to be on the base of my birthday card. I want to pop this up and I kind of just want it to have a white backer. Does that make sense? Like I think, what is this? About a quarter of an inch. It's two, you can see it. It's two and a quarter by a quarter of an inch. So what I'm going to do here, let's see if I can do this. Let's go a little bit less than two and a quarter like that. Just so, right? Two and a quarter. Let's make sure that's perfect. Yep. And then I'm just gonna cut a quarter of an inch. So I'll just pop it to a quarter of an inch like that. And we'll just cut. And that's gonna give me a tiny little backer for, cause I don't really, I didn't wanna, is that gonna fit? Ooh, is that a little? I think I'm gonna have to make it just a little bigger. Let's see, is it that one? Yeah. All right, let's try that again. I need it to be a bit more generous. If I'm going a quarter of an inch, let's see, we're there. And we're gonna go like that. All right, let's see if that's a little bit better. Horseshoes and hand grenades, I'm telling you. I don't know what that means. Okay, that's gonna be better. That way it will just be white and you won't see the pattern on the background, okay? Love my little trimmer for little tiny jobs like this. Next, I'm gonna add some foam squares to the back. Well, actually, let's let's glue this little friend on first. How about if I just take some, let's get a little Gina K this, and maybe I could just do the old trick where she just sort of makes a little mushy mush like that. Oh, this is very messy, Kath, what are you doing? And then I could kind of smush that there and then smush that there like that. Okay, is that gonna have enough glue on it? Maybe, oh, I don't like the feel of this at all. <laughs> I'm not a messy person. Well, I mean, it depends. Okay, let's just line it up like that and like that. Okay, but I think that will work for our purposes because now, there we go. Mama's gotta go wash her hands. So I'm gonna put that on this friend for the candle. Okay, maybe we will have, well, yellow should be at the top. And I'm just gonna, I'm gonna use all of this to create dimension for, oh, did I lose that one? For this card project. So it's gonna take me a little while to do, but you know, sometimes what they say, it's, it's worth it. <laughs> but the reason why too is because then I can take, you know, a long strip here, let's see, and just go like that and just pop some in strategic places so that everything can be popped up appropriately. So I'll go ahead and add all of this to the back and then we will build our card. Let's create a card base. This is going to be a landscape orientation. Just gonna get that down a little so I can get that full score line like that. 
Now I'll fold this down, get my nice bone folder that I love, my Teflon bone folder. So the finished size of this card is going to be five and a half inches wide by four and a quarter inches tall. Let's take the backers off of the foam tape that I've put on the back and notice that's the deboss side and this is the emboss side, which is the one that I wanted to have on the front. And let's see, I gotta offset this a little so I can see what I'm doing. I'm just gonna pop this down so it has a nice framing margin around the whole card like that. All right, that gives us this nice white on white texture and tone. Here's the thing, I, I was playing around with this off camera and I realized that I don't think I like, I don't like the candle on here. Like it just, it's just not doing anything for me. And I, I, I thought, well, maybe we could, you know, switch the orientation and have it, you know, sometimes you have an idea and it might not work out, right? And so you change your mind. And so I think what I'm gonna do, and I, I do have my foam tape, I'm just gonna keep this as a very simple birthday card. And the other thing too, you know, I'm not using the shadow layer for this because I want this beautiful texture to show. I also think because it has so much fun color, I don't want anything to take away from the graphic impact of this card. So let me get all the backers off here and we will place this down onto the card. I'm going to use a little connect glue on the back because I, I want this to be straight. And sometimes I think it, oh my goodness, my connect glue is going crazy. All right, so what I'm going to do, my, my connect glue is uh, full of, it's getting towards the end and I gave it too much of a squeeze. And sometimes what will happen is it just sends a little too much out. I'll just coat the Dury strips with a little glue, right, like that. I'm not even going to put it in upside down in my little holder because I think it's it's got too much pressure in it. All right, let's get that out of the way. And now let's just place this right in the center. Right? Just visualize it. Top, bottom, side to side. That's why I like that little bit of glue because it does give me that option. And if I bring in my clear T-square real quick here, I can actually get underneath and see how straight that is. And I think that's good. I think that's good. The B's and the D's side to side. That is what I want for my card. I just, I, you know, sometimes you don't know. I wonder what would happen if I literally just put a flame on top of the, like that. Oh, what do you think? Oh my gosh, that is, <laughs> sometimes you have a moment of inspiration and my friends, I think that is the moment of inspiration. I didn't even make this connection that the center of this is going to resemble a candle. Oh my gosh, what? Right? Do you see it? Well, obviously you're looking at it very close up. I think that's really fun. Now, should I add a little shine to this? It doesn't need it. You know, that is a very clean and simple sort of graphic thing, but why not? Why not while we're at it? All right, I'm not gonna get too aggressive with the shine and the boop. Let's open this back up and let's add these on, okay? It's dripping. All right. Get right in there. Just for a little shine, right? Nothing too over the top. That's one of the things that I love about silver confetti sequins is it adds a minimal shine, you know, just a little. Just a little coming off the top and coming off the bottom. And that is the finished card project. Thanks so much for watching today. You can find all of the supplies that I used in today's video linked below in the description box. I'll be back with another card project soon. Thanks so much for watching today. I would love to have you become a subscriber to my YouTube channel. And if you do subscribe, be sure to hit the gray bell below the video so that you don't miss the next time I post. 
Here are a couple other videos that you might be interested in watching. Thanks so much and have a great day.